what God says marriage is. We're going to take today a look at Genesis chapter 2, where we see the very first marriage take place, the marriage of Adam and Eve. By the way, did you know that Adam and Eve had the perfect marriage? You're like, that doesn't exist. Uh, Eve didn't have to hear about Adam's hear about all the other men Eve could have married. Right? I'm going to point out some three major ideas this morning. One, first, marriage is a characteristics of that marriage that took place there. And finally, what then does it look like, or when is a couple considered actually married? And we're going to see if we can pull that out of there. Um, it's a lot this morning, so I'm going to throw a lot out there, but we can take the week to process it. So let's take a verse 20. It says, so the man gave names to all the livestock. Okay, this is not talking about Eve and Adam. Okay, this is talking about Adam naming the animals. And the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place of the flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib that he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. This is the recording of the very first marriage. You might say, this doesn't sound like a marriage. It was God creating a man and God creating a woman. But do you notice that in these scriptures it says that he was united with his wife. He didn't use the word woman. It wasn't say Adam and a woman. No, it wasn't about a man and a woman. It was about a man that he created. And then from that man, he created a wife, which is different from woman. And, and he, she became his very, very first to the other. They were man and wife. God also called means an aid. He was not enough on his own. Uh, the way God created Adam was that he needed than the creation of just Adam. And the two of them would multiply and fill the earth, and if you read on, do that alone. Okay? Everybody knows what I'm saying. Adam could not multiply the he needed God's help and God had a plan. God knew that Adam would need someone to that Adam would need someone that uh, someone would need to put down the toilet seat. Right? Man needed an aid. So God took one of Adam's ribs to create Therefore, she was part. When we talk about marriage today, we all always think about how two separate people come that originally for him. It's interesting. Side. He took a side from Adam and made another of is the other half, right? Or for most of us, the better half, right? Because we get that term, we say rib today, but the literal language was and made Eve from that. But notice that Adam was made from the dust and because she was part 
here. It's just they're very special bones in a human skeleton because they can regenerate. Most of our remove ribs to use rib God used for Adam might have been able might have regenerated. Sometimes Christians because of what happened there both have 12 pair of ribs. They all have the same amount of ribs. You know if um, the day after that it doesn't mean that they won't have an arm. Make sense? Yeah. So Tater writes this, he says, I, I, he, he points out that God didn't take the bone from Adam's head, him, his side, to be helper, and by his side. Eve from Adam, I also want us to think about that marriage is considered a covenant relationship with God. These days, we don't have a covenant relationship with Adam and Eve relationship. A covenant Accompanied by an oath. Covenants are slightly different from contracts because they're relational and personal, and they make an agreement that we're going to do something. God in the center of this agreement, God is the head of this agreement, and we will. And honoring each other in the thing where God is supposed to be inner thread in, into the relationship. And that's why most marriage ceremonies include the quote from Mark 10 9 that says, There because God is supposed to be woven into the covenant between the man and the woman. That's where phrase about how. Um, three, uh, two are better than one, but when God is in a mix, it's like a cord of three strands that can't easily be broken. It's describing this covenant. A covenant is where it's not just a man and a woman saying, we're going to agree to cohabitate or we're to share a bank account. No, it's a covenant between God and man that we recognize that God made man, and out of that man, God made a woman, and when this man Has a plan for them to, to it's a, a, a relationship with us together, and this is a covenant that is for life, but it is, is meant to for us to honor each other broken. That is the idea of a covenant. It's a three-way agreement. It's held together not by two people, but three. The word covenant derives cut. This means that is sealed with blood or a cut of some sort. husband and a wife or even in a, in a covenant relationship between others God would, would have them and they would cut an animal down the middle and cut it he would it's this covenant and that word cut literally um, I mean the co covenant literally comes from the God made that first covenant relationship. 
that's why we when God when we see covenants in the future man he would give them many descendants what was the sign of that Old Testament covenant Why? Because it's shown the sign. It's shown that they were in a covenant relationship. There was a cut that needed to be made. The New Testament, we are not having to be circumcised because the cut was already made, and it's not on our flesh. It was on Jesus's flesh. He was. Cut. covenant with us but when God sees a relationship between a man and a woman as this union become one whole well let's look at the these uh, verses here in Genesis chapter 2 and look at this marriage covenant from this passage. First, marriage is between a man and a woman. God made each other. Their word wife is gender specific, meaning it is female. The word for man, when he created man, the word for wife When we read about throughout Scripture, it, it cannot mean together. It takes a man and a woman to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth as God said they should do. Woman is part of the man. Remember. She is made to help make. Um, many people believe the woe in woman. I know some of you guys are thinking, whoa, man. Of. Woe out of man. Woe man. So it's to remind us that God made woman out of man. And when a man is joined together with a woman. woman was cut from man and a, a covenant marriage relationship is the joining of a covenant relationship back to God and a woman the Bible our natural sin it's not politically correct but that's biblical Leviticus 18.22 identifies sexual sin as an abomination and a detestable sin. Romans chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 declare homosexual desires and actions to be shameful. 1 Corinthians 6 9 states that homosexuals are wrongdoers who will not inherit the kingdom of God. Condemned in the Bible that follows that homosexual marriage is not God's will and would be in fact sinful as well. Every mention of marriage in the Bible and a woman. Now does that mean we hate people who are doing We don't agree with people. Uh, it is right, right? We don't believe that people who are cheating on their spouses is right. We don't believe adultery is right. We don't believe homosexuality is right. Cheating is right. We don't point out one sin and say it's worse than the others, but it's still sin. And it's wrong. God says marriage is between a man. 
Hacker, the second principle from Genesis chapter 2 in this marriage of Adam and Eve, that marriage is intended for a lifetime. Now, I know I'm talking about sensitive things between a man and a woman. And many years ago, that wouldn't have been a bad thing to say, but today it's in politically incorrect. And saying that this morning, no in the church end up in divorce, that means that probably at least half of you listening to me this morning are in divorce or have been divorced. And I'm not saying that as a critical is intended for life. Now, I'm not saying that we haven't messed up. I'm not saying that, that we don't fall short at times, but I'm saying that that's the reality of the life. The life. Eve was not made on earth like Adam. She was made from Adam. Together they become one flesh, it says. is why we say until death do us part because once you're united as one to be torn apart again is painful testament mark chapter 10 Verses 7 through 9 say, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother, that he will be united to his wife, and the two will become flesh. So, together, let no one separate. See, God's intention was for him to join a couple. Now, Remember we talked about covenants? Why did I talk about covenants? Because God's intention is for a man. Amen. For a woman to be godly. Together, who knows what. A godly man and an ungodly woman, who knows. Did I say that right? Uh, who knows is what's going to come from it, right? Or even when you take two people who are professing Christians and you put them together. As a covenant with God. It looks different. God and a woman of God who understand the marriage covenant, who understand that what we're about to do, we believe is God's will, do this in order to bring him honor. Not doing this just because he's cute, I'm not just doing this because we're doing this because we believe this is a godly thing and that God is going to be in it. Not that it won't be difficult and Um, very honor God and if bring us through. But we don't talk about covenants. So therefore we see we see it as an agreement. And again, that's not a critical thing. But the reality is, is God, God takes a covenant seriously and he wants us to with him. Amen? And no matter what our past are, no matter what our history has been, no matter where we have come from, Amen? And we could be released of whatever was happened in our past. And we thank God for that. And we can move forward. And, and marriage is intended. This too is that marriage is monogamous. 
You might say, well, that's not a big deal, but it is. It's singular. Both man and wife are singular throughout scriptures. It's not men and wives. It's not wife and men. You guys get me? Even though we read about, I know, this is where some of your thoughts are already there. Well, there are people in the Old Testament that were married to multiple people, so what, what about that? And know that necessarily that wasn't always God's plan. Even though we read about her marriage was to be between a single man and a single woman. Some people ask, well, people the Old Testament. Well, I go back to the first wedding. I made one wife. If God's plan for us to have multiple That's just me. But I know that if we read the stories of the Old Testament, sometimes they had multiple wives because of politics, sometimes for power, sometimes out of fear, and sometimes. Seven hundred wives and three hundred. Crazy. All right. Yeah, so I said that right. Seven hundred. All right. Read about Solomon's life. He he went away from his own counsel and his old wisdom. Over time, God had a clear instructions for anyone that would be king, including Solomon. 14 through 20, he said they should not have multiple wives and they should not accumulate silver or gold. These were commands that were given so that they would not trust instead of God. Broke all three of these divine prohibitions. Thus, Solomon taking on 699 of his wives and all 300 concubines. Word for him. Just as God predicted as your gods and his heart was now fully devoted to the Lord his God. It says in 1 Kings 11.4. Please, his wife, Solomon, even got involved in sacrificing to Moloch and started doing detestable Bible. I know he built the temple. I know God did great things from him, but he still made mistakes. He messed up. And God does have a plan for marriage is... Is for us to have Titus to for the leaders only to have one spouse. As we look in the verses in Genesis, a union between one woman, blessed by God. So let me just kind of get us to think about one thing. So. Today, I'm asked sometimes, well, when is a husband and a wife, when do they officially be? Kisser? Is it when he says, do you say I do? And they say, I do. Well, what is that a covenant is made between a man and a woman? God has to walk them through. And he does. When they look at scriptures and things, they say, well, a marriage has to be when the government says so. So when they have a marriage certificate, when 
signs it and says they are leaving. 13 and 1st. So therefore, if that's what your government says you have married, like getting a marriage license and being recognized by an efficient and so on. Is that Adam and Eve didn't have somebody. Even today, there are some countries that don't believe uh, in observing marriage. So maybe it's a little bit more. Second, some so, so some say when Eve to Adam. Could you just imagine? As I decided to make a helpmate for him, and when he first saw his bride, and God presented Eve to Adam, it was like a ceremony. God. Nearly all cultures around the world have some sort of ceremony for weddings. Did you know in India, instead of a ring, a, a, a woman gets a, a anyone who does money on her dress. Just saying. In Germany, sometimes a bride and groom saw a log in half together. In the Philippines, I read that some couples release dozens. Sai tribe of Kenya, the father just in case you ever want to go there and get married with the Maasai tribe. In China, a tea a groom will present his tooth to the bride's father when asking for permission to marry his daughter. Ceremonies are common. In John 2, Jesus attended and even performed a miracle during a wedding. He obviously didn't have a problem with the ceremony. Get married before a justice of the peace or just before a pastor. In COVID, I married a bride and a groom and a a brother and a sister and her parents on the other side were there and that was ache and all the let's still be in that is when an official um, some people say marriage is official when it's consummated in other words That's what seals the marriage. The problem with this is that some people can't. And also, some people have relations before marriage. And it's interesting, the Bible doesn't say marriage in God's eyes will play into the great tells you to sign a paper and get a license, do it. Obey the laws of the land. Just a few of you. But come together and recognize seeking God seeking his will, who come together in agreement. Find himself, not just in one and the other, but together. And use them together. And use them to bless others together. In the weeks ahead, we're going to take other looks from different places of the Bible about marriage and look at the purpose and about romance and about intimacy and things like that.
But when we read and hear definitions of marriage, may we not be swayed. May we hold to the biblical truth of marriage. May we know that marriage is between a husband and a wife. It's may Satan not influence us in these matters. And may we hold to the truth in celebrating marriage as God intended it. Communion. That remember the covenant of Jesus Christ with all of us, whether single or married. And so we're going to transition here and get ready to in a moment of prayer to search our heart. God knows your heart. If you're if things aren't right, if they're not well, ask God. Let him pay where he can if you have a desire to be married and have not been there yet, just Try out will that he has a will for you. Trust in the timing and all that. Know that God has a plan for marriage. He has a plan for your marriage. Trust in it. Lay, lay it down before God right now and trust it to him. For our widows, we just ask God to comfort. Lord, we you know what it is. Lord, there are some that have been divorced and and are starting over in their life and of your will. Right. That you would be glorified. Know us, Lord, that if there's anything I mentioned that covenant literally means, the root of it means to cut. Killed them in order to be a sacrifice for our sins. In the New Testament, we read how Jesus was cut for us. He said, surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced. For our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by him, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. And the Lord, all of us. When we take You're taking it at home with us, some bread or crackers. But Jesus was pierced for us. Can be forgiven. He took us into a new covenant with him. He gave his life as a new covenant by of received from the Lord. on the night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it Lord we give you thanks to the bread we thank you for coming to this world in the we break this bread 
also that how Jesus broke the bread and passed it around the table for all of us. Thank you, Jesus. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We thank you for the, what it symbolizes, your blood. Lord, a cup. remember how Jesus laid down his life for us, how he was scourged, how he was, uh, a crown of thorns was placed on his head, how he was nailed to the cross. We thank you for the blood that was shed for us, for our sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It goes on to say, in the same way he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new cup New covenant in drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim Let's take and drink together. We thank you, Lord, for willingly giving up your life for my sins. Be glorified. Lord. Lord, bless. Lord, every single person, every married couple, every widowed couple, every divorced couple, every. Be with us all. Lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen.